Hi everybody, how you doing? This is Joe slash FoozleCC, and today I have a quick tip and trick on how to make that enemy movement in your game, whether it's using Pathfinding or Move2, or maybe even some other custom movement schemes, and give it another layer of quality and polish in your game. So stick around and see what we're gonna implement. All right, everybody. So today, the way that we're going to bring that movement scheme up just a little bit inside of your games is we're going to focus on giving the enemy the knowledge of not where your player is, but where your player is going to be. And that will make a big difference in how your enemy moves and how intelligent it looks on your screen. So we're going to be focusing on the math and the equations that come from predicting how to intercept a moving object, AKA your player. So imagine your player is moving on your screen and you're an enemy. Well, should your enemy go to where your player currently is or should it try to go towards where your enemy or where your player is going? Is a small difference, but it makes the enemy seem so much more intelligent. And there's so many things that you can build on top of this, whether it's line of sight and other constraints that you might wanna put into your game, but we're gonna focus on the bare essentials of the math related to knowing how what your player and where your player is going and feeding that to the enemy. And whether it's using pathfinding or move tos or something else, that point can be used as an input into your movement scheme. So let's jump in and see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got a simple layout here. Let me go ahead and bring this up and see what the play looks like. So right now, I've got a simple movement scheme on and I can drag this guy around and he's trying to follow me. And if you look, he's trying to really just follow wherever the player has been. And he's not very smart about it he just goes and does some pathfinding every few seconds and this green dot represents the target of what he is trying to do so let's just say i'm going around this island here and i say okay let's let's see let's see what he does oh you know he he goes the long way around the island instead of trying to cut me off now let's go back to the starting point here and let's move my enemy back here and now let's actually let's turn this intercept on let me bring it back and let's just see what I'm talking about. So now you can see he takes the smart direction and he tries to cut me off. And what he's doing is he's taking the math and the equations that I'm gonna show you real quick how to implement of figuring out where my player is going based off my position, my velocity, uh, the angle at which I'm moving. And it's figuring out based off of its own speed what angle it should take to intercept me. And there's some good math that you can find online that tells you how to do all this. All right, so there's a great article uh, that was written by Mike Oberberger, link down below in the descriptions, that talks about how to take those known inputs and arrive at a set of equations that we can write to determine the final position of interception as well as the time it'll take to intercept it, which might be useful for another element within your game. There's a lot of good background information that he provides here. I'm gonna skim on down though to the position where it starts to talk about what we're doing. So imagine you have a chaser and a runner and you're trying to figure out where they're going to intercept. Your runner is, think of you as your player and your chaser, think of as your enemy. Obviously your user is controlling your runner. So this is constantly changing in, sp in terms of speed and which angle you're going, but you can call this on some frequency and continue to update where the best point of interception is for your enemy. And it will make your movement schemes just feel a little bit more intelligent. He does a really nice job here of breaking down all the math and do a simple set of equations that we can implement. So let's dive on in and take a look at what those equations are. What's given? We have the current location of the chaser or the enemy. We know that. The current location of the runner or the player. We know that. The speed of the chaser is, a that is able to attain. We'll know that as well. And the current speed and direction of the runner, aka the player. We also know that. So from that, there's some other variables that you need to work with that derives off of those inputs. Uh, and ultimately, we boil it down to a quadratic equation that we need to solve. And I certainly Certainly needed to brush off a few cobwebs out of the brain here to remind myself on well a quadratic equation actually has two solutions there's the plus and the minus side and you want to choose the better of the two uh, sometimes only one's viable sometimes both are viable and you want to pick the better one aka how do i get there faster there's also some good vector math that you have to remember how to do when you're implementing this scheme from these equations we come down to the fact that we need to solve for the quadratic time t and we're going to then use that to calculate our position of interception using the time that we select out of the two possible solutions now in a quadratic equation there's there's three element there's three variables that we have to input 
A, B, and C, because it's my, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. And when you look at that, A, B, and C, he's nicely defined down below as the speed of the chaser squared minus the speed of the runner squared is A. B is two times the dot product of D times, or D dot VR, and C is negative D squared. And those variables described up, up here, D is the vector from the runner to the chaser, VR is the current speed and direction of the runner, and little d is the distance between the chaser and the runner. And that quadratic equation ultimately gives us two solutions like they do, and it allows us to pick between two possible paths, the shortest path of interception or the longer path of interception. And sometimes there's some fringe cases where no solutions emerge or only one solution emerges, and you have to deal with those. As a result, once you solve what the shortest path of, of intersection is, you can use these equations to back out ultimately what that point of interception is. So now I all of a sudden have how long until I intercept the object, what angle I need to take, uh, slash where the intersection is going to be, and I can use that to feed my movement schemes. So inside of Construct 3, all I did was I took that point and I did a simple pathfinding call on the behavior pathfinding, uh, and I said, okay, find the path to this and move along that path. So let's go back now and see how I took these equations and I implemented it into the editor. So in my event sheet, I only have 17 events, and really there's just a couple of key items. And the first thing I want you to call your attention to is this function, get intercept underscore ES. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm passing information into a script that I've written that deals with all those equations. What I need to provide to that script is a few things. I need to provide my chaser position, which is my enemy or my pirate in the game I was just playing. I need to provide the runner, which is my player uh, position. I need to provide the chaser speed, the runner speed, and then also the runner direction. I know all those things. I know what my player's position is. I know what my player's uh, speed is based off my movement scheme. I can set my max speed. I can set my current speed. I know what my direction is through just calling on, you know, what my current angle is. And I also know what my chaser is capable of speed wise. So with that information, you can extract the, the resulting point back and use that in your schemes. So let's go over and look at my intercept.js uh, script that I created for this. Now, one thing when working with scripts, just remember there's a couple things you have to do, especially in the most recent update of Construct 3, if you are using Construct 3, is when you create it, make sure you select this purpose of imports for events so that your function get intercept is available in your event sheet. Otherwise, you'll get a, uh, an, an error in your, in your console log. So make sure you remember to do that. Also, this is really useful to do on pretty much all of your scripts run on startup or at least in one of your scripts, uh, global this dot g runtime equals runtime. This gives you access to the variables that you might want to have access to when writing a script. And you can just now use g underscore runtime to reference those. For instance, down here, I reference some variables that I want to set, some global variables. My function here, I passed in these parameters, right? And using the equations that the other article provided, I'm able to dig in, I'm able to provide the necessary inputs to this quadratic equation. Then I get my quadratic A, B, and C. And if we go back to our quadratic equation over here that I'm trying to solve, this is my A, my B, and my C, right? And if we jump down to what those ultimately end up being, these are their equations. And if you come back here, how that then is expressed is, is here. Chaser speed squared minus runner speed squared. Then you have your two times dx times vx, vrx plus dy times vry. If you have two vectors, vector a and vector b, what you just need to do is simply break it into the x and y component for each of them, and then multiply the ax times the bx plus the ay times the by, and that's how you do the dot product. And then for my c, you've got that as well. And then once you come in, there you, you might need to do some more fringe air handling, but there's a couple things that I did. Uh, one is you have to make sure that the term of the B squared minus 4AC isn't negative. Otherwise, it's impossible for the chaser to ever catch the runner. And you might want to say, well, in that case, just go to where the character is currently. Uh, else, you go in and you solve for your two possible solutions. In my case, I call it a T1 and T2 because of the plus and the minus in the quadratic equation. Uh, and then what you can do is do some handling on different scenarios where if they're both you know, viable, choose the shortest route. If there's only one available, choose that. If there's none available, then do some sort of air handling, like go to where the player currently is and try to do your best to catch up. And then once you have that solution, you can back calculate 
with the new T, what you chose, what your new play, uh, position of intercept X and Y is. And then lastly, I just do a simple call to my global variables of X and Y and T. So using these equations, I was able to take the information that I know and decide for at least my current player angle where the point of intercept would be knowing the speeds of the two objects and pass that back to my event sheet inside the global variable and use that to set my position of um, sprite, my helper sprite here that I'm calling intercept to intercept X and intercept Y, which is what I've now just set by calling this function. And then I can find a path for my enemy from the current their current spot to the intercept X and intercept Y. And then once I get my, my uh, find my path, I can move along the path. And I can do this on some frequency. I'm doing it every 0.25 seconds. You can choose what frequency you need and you get this nice um, solution where now instead of a, you know them kind of just blindly following wherever I've been to, hey, I'm gonna make you a little bit smarter and I'm gonna have you try to go to where I'm going. And that is just something that makes your movement in your games just feel a little bit more polished and makes it a little bit harder on the player, but definitely something to consider implementing into your own movement schemes inside of your game. All right, everybody, and that was my tip and trick for today. If you enjoyed that, please consider subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. It's free for you to do, and it makes a big difference for me, and I'm, it always makes my day when I see one come in. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this. I think it's an easy way to add another level of polish to your games by focusing on where your player is going to be rather than where your player was for your enemy, enemies to move to. So with that said, have a good one, everybody, and good luck on your game dev journeys.